Okay, again, the last one, uh, the last type of statement is biconditional statement, wherein the form is if and only if. So P, if and only if Q, that is equivalent to P implies Q and Q implies P. So we have here in. So let P, Q, and R represent the following. P, she will go on vacation. Q, she cannot take the, the train. R, she cannot get a loan. So write the following symbolic statements in words. So for letter A, P, if and only if, Q. So when we write that in words, P, that is, she will go on vacation. If and only if. Then we're going to negate our Q when we can when we negate cannot so that we can only if she can take the train. So the symbolic statement P if and only if not Q in words, she will go on vacation if and only if she can take the train. Next letter B. Not R, if and only if, not P. So we're going to negate R. So when we can, when we negate this statement, she can not, so when she can, she can get a loan. So we have the symbol if and only if. We're going to negate P. We're going to negate she will go, so she will not, if she will not go on vacation. Okay, that's it. Next example, we're going to determine the truth value of A by conditional. So since we're asked to find the truth value, it's either true or false, our answer. Next, um, I mean, letter A, we have x plus 4 equals 7 if and only if x equals 3. So if we are going to substitute the value of x, which is 3 here, 3 plus 4, that is equal to 7. So letter A, that is A statement. For letter B, x squared equals 36 if and only if x equals 6. So if we solve this problem, I mean this equation, x squared equals 36. Since this is an equation, we, the answer, um, I mean we will have two roots. So therefore, when we square it both sides, Okay, since it's an equation, we have two values. X is positive, negative, 6. So there are two roots for this equation. So uh, we can have positive 6 and negative 6. Since we only have here X is 6, letter B is a false statement. Okay, next, every conditional statement has three related statements. They are called the converse, the inverse, and contrapositive. The converse of P implies Q is Q implies P. So the converse, you are going to interchange your antecedent okay, with the consequent. This will be the converse. Q implies P. The inverse of P implies Q is not P implies not Q, wherein you're going to get the negation of your antecedent and also the negation of your consequent. That is inverse. And the last one is the contrapositive. The contrapositive of P implies Q is not Q implies not Q. So the contrapositive, you're going to negate the antecedent 
and the consequent and then interchange these negated statements. Right? Or if you want, you get the negation of uh, the consequent and the negation, which is just the same, the negation of antistate. That is contra positive. So these are the pattern for the related statements. So let's write example number one. Write the converse, inverse, and contra positive of the given statement. So the given statement, if I get the job, then I will rent a part. So let's uh, P denote to the statement, I get the job. This will be your antecedent implies I will rent the apartment will be your consequent. So when we follow the converse, that is Q implies P. So we will have Q implies P. So if I will rent the apartment, then we're going to interchange it. Then I get the job. Then I get the job. That is the converse, which is few implies P. So we'll get the consequent, which is if I will rent the apartment, which is I will rent the apartment, then our Antecedent, I get the job. Then I get the job. That is the converse. Inverse, the pattern is not P implies not Q. We're going to negate our antecedent. So we will have if I will not get the job. Then we're going to negate this. I will not print the part B. That is the inverse. If I will not get the job, then I will not rent the apartment. Next, the contrapositive, we have not Q implies not P. Not Q, we're going to negate this. I will not rent the job. Sorry, if I will do not forget the extension. If I will not Rent the apartment. Then we're going to negate our P. I will not get the job. Then I will not get the job. That's it. All right, so let's make a true table for conditional and related statements and let's determine which among them are equivalent statements. So let's have first the implication of the conditional statement, which is P implies Q. So true implies true, that is true. True implies false, that is false, and these are true. And when we get Q implies P, this is for converse. True implies true, that is true. False implies true, that is true. True implies false, that is false. False implies false, that is true. So we've noticed that P implies Q are not 
equivalent to Q implies E because they have different truth values. Next, how about for inverse? For inverse, we have not P implies not Q. So for not P, we're going to negate our P. Not true, that is false. Not true, that is false. Not false, that is true. Not false, that is true. Implies. Not Q or not true, that is false. Not false, that is true. Not true, that is false. And not false, that is true. So therefore, we'll have false implies false, that is true. False implies true, that is true. True implies false, that is false. True implies true, that is true. So we've noticed that converse is equivalent to inverse. And the last one is contraposity. For contrapositive, we have not Q implies not P. Okay, not Q implies not P. So we have we already have here not Q false true false Q implies that we are not P false. False, true, and true. So therefore, false implies false, that is true. True implies false, that is false. False implies true, that is true. True implies true, that is true. So we've noticed that conditional or implication is equivalent to contrapositive. Okay. So another example, we're going to determine whether related statements are equivalent. So letter A, if a number ends with a 5, then the number is divisible by 5. So if we let a number ends with a 5, it would be our P. P implies so we are given. The number is divisible. So let's, uh, you know, the number is divisible by 5 sub letter Q. So we'll have P implies Q. And the second statement, if a number is divisible by 5, that is our Q. If, so if Q implies, so we have then the number ends with the 5. This will be a P. So we know that P implies Q. They are not equivalent. I mean, P implies Q is not equivalent to Q implies P. Because this is converse. When this is implication, they are not equivalent. So therefore, letter A are not equivalent. Not equivalent. Next, letter B. If two lines in a plane do not intersect, then the lines are parallel. So if we let two lines in a plane do not intersect, the our P implies the lines are parallel, the our Q. And next statement, if two lines in a plane are not parallel. So when we negate this, our Q, so we'll have not Q implies, then the lines intersect. So we're going to negate this, not P. 
So letter B, P implies Q, that is equivalent to not Q implies not B. That is implication in the second one is contrapositive. So the second one, the statements are equivalent. The statements are equivalent. All right, so in this topic class, we're going to consider different methods of analyzing arguments to determine whether they are valid or invalid. So let's define what do we mean by argument. When we say argument, these are consist of an argument consists of a set of statements called premises and another statement called the conclusion. An argument is valid if the conclusion is true whenever all the premises are assumed to be true. An argument is invalid if it is not a valid argument. Otherwise, it's invalid. So you need to check your truth table kung meron ba doon uh, na raw na puro true dapat ang premises tapos conclusion dapat doon maging true then. Otherwise, kung false yun, magiging invalid na siya. Alright, so before we uh, construct a truth table and determine the given argument, if it's valid or invalid, let's write an argument first in symbolic form. So letter A, the fish is fresh or I will not order it. So that's the first statement, one of our premises. The second premise, the fish is fresh. And our conclusion, therefore, I will order it. So we use three dots for therefore. So the first one, the fish is fresh or I will not order it. So let's use the fish is fresh. We uh, use letter, like for example, for letter A, we use fish is fresh related using letter F. The fish is fresh, that is our statement, or so this, the symbol for or, I will not order it. So we're going to use, uh, let's, so let's write here, let's use F, the fish is fresh. And for O, I will order. Okay, so we're, there is a not, so we're going to negate O. O. The second one, another statement, the fish is fresh. The fish is fresh, that is F. Then you're going to write a line, a horizontal line. Therefore, so we'll have a conclusion. So it means that we have two premises. The first, a compound statement. The second one is a simple statement. And we have a conclusion. Therefore, I will order it. So the symbol for therefore, three words. I will order it. That is O. This is the symbolic term for the given argument. Okay. Another example. If Aristotle was human, then Aristotle was so this would be our first uh, premise. So we have the if and then form. So we have, we're going to use arrow. Aristotle was human. Let's use, for example, what letter? Let's use A. A implies. Then Aristotle, no, oh, human. Let's use H. If Aristotle was human, then, so if H, then Aristotle was portal, let's use letter M. So it's our first premise, H implies M. Second premise, Aristotle was human, that is H. Therefore, so let's put three dots, Aristotle was mortal, that is a word. Right?
Okay, so let's use this example about Aristotle. If Aristotle was human, then Aristotle was mortal. That is, H implies F. Aristotle was human, that is H. Therefore, Aristotle was mortal, that is M. Um, we're going to determine if the given argument is valid or not. So we're going to construct again a truth table. So before you construct a truth table, you need to write first the given argument in symbolic. So we're done with the first step. We're going to write the given argument in symbolic form. Next is we're going to construct a truth table that shows the truth value of each premise. And the truth value of the conclusion for all combinations of truth values of the simple statement. So we have here two letters, H and M. So let's use H and M. So we have to raise to N. Our N, we have two statements, two squared. So we have four. So instead of P and Q, normally we are using P and Q, right? At this time, we are using H and M. But it's just the same. It's just a letter. You can represent any statement using N. Letter. So we have two, two false, false, and two false, two false. So let's find H implies M. So we have by like a conditional true implies true, that is true. True implies false, that is false. False implies true, that is true. False implies false, we have true. And H. So let's write, this is our first premise, our second premise. So we have true, true, false, false. So therefore, our conclusion is M. So let's have first, second, and our conclusion. False to false. And then we're going to check our table. If the conclusion is true in every row, like this one, the first row, we have true, true, the conclusion is true. So that is bad, correct. False implies true. I mean, false and okay lang na mag false ang conclusion. True and false. Okay lang din na mag-true ang conclusion. True and false, okay lang din na mag-false ang conclusion. So therefore, the given argument is valid. Kailan ulit magiging valid? Pag meron kayong nakita na row, na halimbawa yung sa mga premise niya, true, pagdating sa conclusion, mag-false. So therefore, the given argument is invalid. Right? So, that's it. Okay, so, let's have another example. Let's determine whether the following argument is valid or invalid. Letter A, if it breaks, then the game will not be played. So, let's use letter R for it breaks. And then... Let's use G. The game will be played. Okay, so for the first premise, we have the if and then. So when we write the first premise, the symbolic form. The first step is if it rains, so R implies the game will not be played. So we're going to negate this statement. So we'll have not G. It's the first premise. Next, it is not raining. So we're going to negate it rains. So it is not raining letter. So we'll have not. R. Therefore, our conclusion 
the game will be played. That is G. Now let's construct a true table R and G. True, true, false, false. Then alternate true, false, true, false. Let's have not G first, not G. We're going to negate this column. So not true, that is false, not false, that is true. Not true, that is false, not false, that is true. Then implication R implies not G. R implies G. So true implies false is false. True implies true is true. False implies false that is true. False implies true that is true. This is our first premise. Next, not R, our second premise. We're going to negate this column. So not true. That is false. Not true. That is false. Not false. That is true. Not false. That is true. And for our conclusion, have to check true, false, true, false. Then let's um determine if the given argument is valid or invalid. So when we check. False, false, and the conclusion is true. And then, we have false, false, the conclusion is true, that's fine. True, false, false, so it's fine. True, true, false, it's correct. The last row, true, true, false. So we have for the premises are true, then it becomes false in the conclusion. So therefore, this row indicates that the given argument is in value. Okay, last example. The given argument we have, if I am going to run the marathon, then I will buy new shoes. So we label each statement, it's simple statement. We let M, I am going, I am going to run the marathon. Then I will buy new shoes for letter S. I will buy new shoes. Then let's use letter D for I will buy a television. I will buy a television. Okay, so let's now write the symbolic form of the given argument. If I am, so we have if then. If I am going to run the marathon, I am going to run the marathon. I will buy in your shoes. I will buy in your shoes like this. This will be our first promise. Next, if I buy new shoes, letter S. Then, of them, I will not buy a television. I will negate the statement. So, therefore, if I buy a television, we also have if and then. If I buy a television, I will buy a television that is B. Implies so that if then I will not run the marathon. I'm going to negate the statement. So we have M implies S. First one is second. S implies not E. For conclusion, E implies not M. Next, since we were done. Uh, 
writing the given argument is called form, we're going to construct a term table. So we have MST. So we have three statements. Therefore, we have to raise to n. Our n is three. We have three states. Therefore, we have eight rules. M S P. For eight rules, we have four two four false. Then for S, the long two, the long this, the long two. And then alternate true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, so let's find M implies S. M implies S. True implies true, that is true. Two implies two, that's two. Two implies false, that's false. Two implies false, that is false. False implies true, that's true. False implies true, that's true. False implies false, that's true. False implies true, that is true. Next, let's have not D. I'm going to begin with this column. Not true. So we have false, true, false. True, false, true, false, true. Next, so this will be first. Next, S implies T. Our second time is S implies not true. True implies false, it's false. True implies true, that is true. False implies false, that is true. False implies true, that is true. True implies false, that is false. True implies true, that is true. False implies false, that is true. True implies true, that is true. Next, for the conclusion, let's have first not M. Not M, we're going to negate this column. So, for apat na false. Apat na true. Then, let's find our conclusion. P implies not M. P implies not M. True implies false, it's false. False implies false, that is true. True implies false, it's false. False implies false, that is true. True implies true, that is true. False implies true, that is true. True implies true, that is true. False implies true, that is true. Now let's check, let's check each column. So we have true, false, so false. True, 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 false, true, false, fine, false, true, true, that's fine, true, false, true, true. True, that's true, 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 I'm ah, sorry, true, true, that's true, correct, true, true, wait, true, false, it's fine, it's true, 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 it's true, 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 it's true, and the last true, true, conclusion is true. So, the argument is, indeed, kukuha tayo dito ng puro true.
the third the fourth the last three the last three oh. this one this one so you know, Okay, so the argument is bad. Okay, so that is the end of the second part of our topic about logic. Thank you.